I'm in Moutier today in Switzerland at Tornos. Uh, I'm going to be looking shortly at the DT26. Now, uh, Tornos face uh, a lot of stiff competition in this area on Swiss type machines. And I'm here uh, in this video to find out why uh, Brees here thinks that this machine is winning most of the battles when it comes to uh, the competition. Um, Brees, thanks for your time this, uh, this morning. The Swiss DT26 mm -hmm. then, summary, very affordable, entry-level Swiss-type machine. Would that be right? Yeah, that's totally correct. And also very powerful. I mean, it's very powerful and very rigid. And that's, uh, that's the main difference between this machine and, and this competition. That's one of the main differences, let's say it like that. OK, if it's more powerful, what, what's the end result of that then? You're making parts quicker yeah. uh, as a result of what, taking heavier cuts, you exactly, believe? Exactly, exactly. Uh, I mean, the, result, the end result is more parts per minute. That's, uh, that's the end result. Basically, the machine is able to take other material, is, is able to cut more per, uh, per revolution. It's a more powerful package and it really pays off for the, for the customer. Um, do you have then examples where you've gone into head-to-head uh, -head with a competition mm. and actually come out with an order as yeah, a result yeah. of that and maybe proved it by turning the parts? Yeah, we do. We did have a customer who, has, uh, who put us basically in uh, quite a fierce competition uh, between us and our peers and uh, this machine was 20%, even 25% faster than the, the best competitors. And we are speaking of machines that are really in the same price range. Uh, interesting, interesting. So what about milling though? If you're saying you've got more power on the, on the, on the turning, have you the same with the milling? Because you, 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 yeah, you yeah. can't have one without the other. Exactly, yeah. We do have that as well. I mean, the, the milling spindle will go up to 5,000 RPM and we have a 2.5 kilowatt uh, motor behind. Okay, and in your opinion, um, then, you, you mentioned the power being one of the reasons you believe mm -hmm. you win the business that you get. What else is there? Anything to do with the tooling? Yeah, well, the tooling is, uh, I mean, it's actually the only machine, I think, on the market that provides such modularity. You can get rid of all the tooling uh, on this machine, on the main operation, all the turning tool, and you can, uh, you can put milling spindle, you can put a thread wireler, a second thread wireler, you can put a polygon milling, so you can really fit the machine to your needs. And that's, in this price range, I think that's the only machine worth for that. Okay, so, so what we're saying here, you've got a lot of static tool holders in, yeah. in the plat and above the main spindle. Mm -hmm. Could you take them out and replace them then with cross-drilling units? Yeah. Totally, yeah, we can replace them. And more than this, I mean, if one day the happy buyer of this, uh, of this machine uh, buys a Swiss GT, he can take the tooling that he has bought for his Swiss DT and place it on his Swiss GT. Okay, so, but if, but if it, so does that mean then, am I right in saying that you could do all the turning, say, on the main spindle and then... Yeah. De designate the rear spindle just for milling or, or vice versa yeah that would be feasible yeah so, so then you can balance out the part the machining of the parts in whichever way is best for the component that's the right sort of message i'm thinking yeah exactly and for that also you have to add to that we have the the, the spindle and the back spindle share the same power so you have literally no limit in the in the balancing you can really set the part as best as it, as it would fit for the for the machining. Okay, so this this is a, a 25.4 mil uh, bar machine, guide bush, non guide bush, of which uh, we were t talking about earlier. You can change within a matter yeah. of, uh, of 15 minutes. It all, also comes with some quite um, well. It comes with high pressure coolant. It comes with some options as standard, doesn't it? Yeah, well, as standard in the package, we have a 20 bar pumps, so you can already work quite a lot with uh, with this uh, with the standard package. Uh, optionally, we can have a, a device that goes from 20 to 140 bars, and we have four input that you can set to the right pressure. Uh, and we have also other devices uh, that are available if, uh, in case of, uh, of need, of course. And, and if you were first into this um, Swiss type or sliding head type market, this is a good way to get into it, isn't it? This type of machine, because it would, it would handle probably, let's say, 80% of applications out there from a, from a turning environment, wouldn't it? Literally, uh, you can do uh, yeah eighty percent of the parts uh, that you that you will find on the market. Yes, because when you introduced the DT twenty six, I know one of the the misconceptions was that Tornos is an expensive machine. Mm -hmm. It's a quality machine, uh, which which I know I'm right in saying. But actually, this is very affordable, isn't it? You are right. You, you know, you're, you're matching prices with the competition uh, with what you consider to be some advantages too. Yeah, it's, it's an entry-level machine, but it's a premium machine, although the price is exactly at the same level as the competition. I mean, in the same range, we are really speaking in the same range there. 
Good stuff, very interesting. There you have it, DT26. Now you heard it there from Brees. If you're just looking to get into this market, then this is a, a good, affordable, economical uh, and productive solution. Thank you very much, Brees. Thank you. All.